In the past, I've shown you how to create a super basic audio visualizer using the Spectralizer plugin for OBS Studio. It's pretty neat and adds a cool source. I'll link that video in the description. But what if you want to go more crazy or more advanced or more beyond to truly make an epic visualizer stream? That is what I'm going to show you in this video as I'm going to show you the process that I used to make our backing track radio streams we were doing for a little bit until I had a power outage and put it on pause. It's pretty cool. I'm Eples Fox, the stream professor, and let's dive in first with how I made the Winamp overlay. I don't necessarily want to give this away since I made it pretty cool for us as a throwback and whatever, but I believe in sharing the free resources that I use. So I found this cool Winamp skin project on Figma. Figma is, I believe, a Google-backed uh, free kind of design resource website that I've heard about in a lot of like TikToks and recommended free apps, but hadn't really looked into until I was setting up this stream. And if you log in and use this, you can actually modify the individual components. And so, and so I went ahead and modified the project and it gives you each, you know, it's basically like editing in, editing in Adobe Illustrator. So you have access, it's a little, it was a little weird to figure out because you have to edit things over here that line up to over here. And this doesn't necessarily match this, but you can edit all the individual elements. And so I was able to replace the Winamp text with backing track. I was able to swap around some of the other numbers. And then I honestly just deleted a lot of elements because this is just kind of a static picture and I wanted to be able to add the text back in in OBS Studio. And so once I had this kind of ready to go, I downloaded it from Figma as you can export the layers. And once I had it customized and the elements I wanted to be able to change deleted from the Figma listing, then I exported the individual layers to a to PNG files that I could bring into OBS Studio. And then in OBS, I reassembled the files, mostly just this big uh, Winamp image as the final back one. We added the backing track overlay in case the album art was missing. And then I got to work on the other elements. So I'm going to disable everything else so we can see how we set this up. And this is just going to be for the music player style. And then we're going to get to the visualizer stuff here in a moment. So once we have our static image imported, that's cool. That's nice, but that's not very impressive to watch as it, you know, as you're playing. So I used the tuna plugin that I showed previously, which allows you to display now playing text and information based on the songs you are playing in your music to add the to pull the image cover that I added to the flack files for our backing track music backing track.gg downloads in our discord server as well and added those as sources so we have the cover art as a png source that will populate whenever a song is playing and then we have the song name added as a text and I went ahead and looked up the text font used for the winamp uh, logos and things like that and pixel mix regular seemed to get as close as I could so I went ahead and mapped that to the Tuna song name. Again, I have a whole video on Tuna linked below if you want to dive in further on that. And then I was experimenting with having a moving playhead. Tuna currently doesn't support like in progress tracking or anything like that. Motion tracking would be kind of weird anyway. Uh, so I just have it static on there. I don't think it really matters. Uh, but those are the main elements is the scrolling text. Now the scrolling text was admittedly kind of annoying to figure out because instead of obviously to make it scroll, I have the scroll filter which just loops it by horizontally scrolling it at a speed that I thought would still be legible, but moves along as we go. And I thought that was pretty nice. But the issue with the text source is that the text source is only supposed to be as wide as the text is. And when you're trying to scroll it beyond that point and stuff, things get weird. And so back in the text properties, I had to play with these settings, which are the custom text extents as well as the alignments. So I aligned it to the left edge here. So that's, you know, it's not going to go any further past that as well as to the bottom. That way I could easily center it up as I needed to. And then I used these custom text extents to allow me effectively to control the border. I think I have it locked. Let me unlock the source. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I uncheck that and click the source, you can see here we get this border. And so if I change it to 3000, you can see here the border for it extends way beyond what I want. And so I had to play around with the right numbers to find exactly what I wanted to fill the exact frame. And even then you can see the green edge. I did crop it a tiny bit as well by holding alt and same thing with height to get it to fit perfectly in the box. And then it will scroll within that box. I have not really talked about custom text extents very much with text sources on the channel. If you would like me to cover it further in a future video, I can. So I got the text scrolling in place, and then I just added a shader filter, uh, the bloom shader included with the shader filter plugin to give it a little bit of a glow. I don't really like how glow works in any of the existing options like stream effects or shader filter or whatever, because they can't do the same kind of 
ambient glow that you could in video editing. It can only glow like within the source's bounds. So it gets kind of weird. Also, the shader filter plugin is currently going through kind of a change of ownership or where you can get it from. Some weirdness there. So I will have a video coming soon on what the next option is once I can present that information. But those are the basics. You got your media player, you got the text playing, and then I did use said Spectralizer plugin that I brought up before. So I added that here. And this is using the Spectralizer plugin. It's available, link in the description. I made a few videos on it. And that is set up to detect the music and provide the bars that Winamp typically, typically has. If we go back to our Winamp skin, you can see here it has the little graphic equalizer or visualizer bars. And I can't do the exact orange to green visualizer, but that's fine. I wanted to be kind of unique. So I just did a orange color with some color variations here in the settings, as well as uh, the SJS filter specifically. You can, of course, kind of change it to your liking with how you want it to look. There are a ton of options, but the bars with outrounded corners and then automatic scaling and gravity based on the song was what I liked. And so if I turn on the song here real quick, you can see here it's going to start bouncing the levels, kind of like how Winamp looked. Again, I didn't get it exact in terms of the colors, but I don't need to for this. That's not what I'm really going for. To get it to look like it's effectively going through like an LCD screen or a LED, you know, panel or whatever like these visualizers do, I first overlaid a uh, scan line image that I have set to blending mode multiply on these. And you can see here, it just barely, if I punch in, you can see it adds the little like separation of the bars that I like with that visualizer. And then on the visualizer, I have a couple of filters. I have the VHS shader filter that I just showed in how to pause your stream tutorial uh, set to apply to image, which is going to restrict it to only the, you know, it's going to preserve the transparency, restrict it to only the shapes created by the visualizer, and then replace the orange color that I was using to, you know, have the color effect. I have another shader for CRT scan lines, which just adds another extra layer to it to divide them up. If I turn that off, you can see it's not really doing much, but that's okay. If I turn this off, you can see the scan lines a bit better. You, it, it just adds, I have it set so you don't necessarily get the division since I'm already doing that with the overlay, and it just gets the little flicker going on in there that moves up the screen and provides the little gradient as it moves that I think looks phenomenal. And then I have the bloom shader, just adding a little bit of glow to everything so it looks like it's actually glowing on a screen. And I think that looks stellar. And honestly, you could get, especially if this is gonna be like in the corner of your screen or something, you could get away with this on its own and be totally fine. Like that would be sick. Like that would be sick on its own. And if that's as far as you need to go, awesome, you're done here. But I wanted to take it a step further and really make it look like we were, you know, going all in on the classic Winamp, you know, iTunes back in the day, visualizers and things like that. And for that, I used a specific program, but you do have a couple options available to you. So the program we were using for the streams is called VZX Player. Uh, you can only download it and purchase it on Steam. It's free if you don't mind the watermark. I obviously didn't want a watermark, so I paid for it. It's like 15 bucks. I'm going to show you three program options. We're just starting with this one. If we launch the player... And the paid version comes with a bunch of extra visualizer packs and things like that as well. When you launch the player, you have playback controls at the bottom, resolution controls, things like that. It likes to hide your cursor, which is really obnoxious. There was no reason to make its own cursor here. You can choose what type of device it access, and it does have ACO support, which is insane. And then you can choose your sound device, which is really nice that it gives you that control. You can actually control what monitor it goes output to and what window mode it runs and everything like that, which is fantastic. As well as you can manually set the position of the window, which is nice as well. So I'm going to choose my secondary output that the music is routing to here, which is that one. And you can see here it's going to start picking up the music. We're going to close settings. And then you can choose your packs. Like I said, the paid version comes with a bunch of packs. And you can turn on and off specific packs if you don't like them. However, it, it isn't really set up to choose a single specific effect and stick with. So that might be a thing you don't like. But there is a lot here. So... Voyages is pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and hit play. There are a couple that I have as favorites, but they're all pretty cool. Very GPU intense, of course, which is why this is running on a dedicated machine. But you can see here we get little like matrixy space rings. You can set it to shuffle between the effects or just scroll through them. The most that it can stay on a singular visualizer is two minutes. I don't know why, uh, but that is the case. And then you actually have an amplification both in settings and right here for in settings it is... Oh, that's time ran. Oh, yeah. Master FX level. So you have, you can add some random variation so that it doesn't stay for the exact same amount of time for each visualizer. And you get a master FX level slider 
for how much you know it's reacting to the music. So you have that for the master, and then for individual ones, you can crank it up to 200. So you can see here we get a lot more brightness. Actually, you can go beyond 200. I don't know what the cap is. It might be 500. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it seems to be 500. And then it gets super bright, which helps when it's in the background for some visuals. And then, of course, you can play, pause. Actually, okay, you can pause it to stick on a singular visualizer. I stand corrected. And then you can go in here, and if your specific visualizer supports it, you can start tweaking the colors and assign specific colors instead of having React manually, which is pretty dope. I dig it. So I can specifically tune in a color scheme here to get the colors that I want it to be, or you can randomize it or make it React on its own. And that looks pretty cool. So then to set this up in OBS, you just add a window capture. Visualizer. And the cool thing is, is since this is a dedicated program and not a website or something, you can leave this minimalized, mi minimalized, minimized, and it will work as well. So then transform, fit to screen, scale filter by cubic, drop it down to the bottom underneath everything. Looks pretty cool on its own, and of course, you can add extra filters to it. So for the backing track one, I was adding filters to it. So I was doing shaders, and of course, these, after running for hundreds of hours, they just kind of stopped and stood in place with whatever effect they had instead of reacting more dynamically, which is annoying, but the shader filter isn't perfect, I guess. So here, of course, I can go in and add the typical VHS shaders or whatever and apply some cool effects to just make it a little bit further. Obviously, you get into, like, giving people seizure territory, so you got to be a little careful with it, but just adds a little bit of extra flair to the visualizer, and it works. While you're setting up your awesome music visualizer, you need to make sure the rest of your stream graphics are up to par. Today's sponsor, Nerd or Die, makes this easy. Nerd or Die features top-tier, high-quality stream overlays, widgets, alerts, and other assets, all fully customizable so that you can use just the parts you want and tweak them to your exact style. The new flat pack pack is perfect for that clean, minimalist look with lots of cool shapes and textures. Meanwhile, the Stream OS pack is an inspired by setups like my own and is great if you want some retro vibes in your chat with four different themes within it and the ability to make your own. All Nerd or Die layouts come with one-click setup scripts for OBS, Stream Elements, and Streamlabs and have After Effects source files to render out your own versions of things. Save 15% at checkout with coupon code EPOSVOX or the link below, but they're also having a spring streamer sale where you can get 40% off specific stream packs or 25% off site-wide, so if you're watching while that sale is active, you don't want to miss out on that. All right, we have a couple other options, one of which is free and one of which is cheaper that you have as well. I'm just showing you the one that we went with. So that was VZX Player. Another one on Steam is TF Visualizer. Now, this one, i have it seems pretty cool, but I've been unable to get it working in an ideal way because the window itself doesn't respond properly. I think it's because it's, it's made in Unity and cheap stuff made in Unity never seems to work right. But like, I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna move it to my fancy zone territory. Oh, it actually worked this time. It was just like moving the window all over the place. And then if I right clicked it or clicked it, it would click through the window. It's not clicking through the window, but it's also not responding to anything for me to like pull up settings or anything. It's a very not responsive program application for some reason. There we go. All right, we got options. So here it connects to Spotify instead of playing your local music. So with the Tuna source before I'm using a VLC playlist source in OBS, you can use whatever you want with Tuna as well, pretty much. Um, and so this specifically connects to Spotify. So I click connect, it opens it up in the browser or it automatically detected it since I already proved it. And then you start playing in Spotify, like our new backing track single, Athena, that just dropped. Go check that out, by the way, if you missed it. We start playing the music. It pulls the album art automatically from Spotify and builds the visualizer around it, which is pretty neat. And then you get some settings over the index of the effect and the intensity. And then you can start adjusting colors. So let's say random colors, randomize, and you can choose specific colors if you want. So we can go super saturated here, which is what I like doing. Purple action. Yeah, close all these. So we got color control, then you have options for the visualizers. You can actually add a wallpaper option to it. Um, you can choose the style of visualizer here. And this is useful for building, you know, streams that look like the cliche like NCS sounds or like the music videos a lot of people put up where you can position it how you like to put extra information around it. My only complaint, actually no. You can add custom icons, custom wallpaper backgrounds. So like I can drag an image 
to the program for custom wallpaper. Let's find a cool picture. Let's say I want one of my weird glitch art posts as a wallpaper for this. I can take the image, drag it to the program, and then it's gonna let me select it as the icon or the wallpaper. I'm gonna choose wallpaper. Yes. Boom, and then you have your own custom background image as well. You can set up keybinds to swap swap the wallpapers, change to small picture mode. You don't get a ton of controls, but I mean, you can crank up the intensity in this index setting, which I think just kind of seems like a seed. I'm not really sure. Hit save and close that. And then it shows the, the song name and title at the bottom here. And I think it's pretty cool as an option if you don't want the over-the-top classic visualizer look that I was going with VZX. All right, we have one more I want to show you as I pause Spotify and everything here. This one is called Plane 9, and it's available to download. It is free. We're going to run Plane 9 windowed here. Pull that up, and then I'm going to start playing the song again. Oh, it's actually already playing in OBS. You don't get much by way of settings. It's a really weird thing. There's three different programs to manage it. None of it is really super intuitive. I'm not a fan of it overall. And like, I don't think I can change audio devices. I have only just installed this today, so I'm probably missing something. Uh, but I don't think you can change audio devices, which is a tad annoying. But you can choose all the different scenes that it uses. It has a ton of scenes built in here, like an absolute ton. It can do VR stuff. You can have it act as your machine's screensaver, which not a lot of stuff supports screensavers in 2022, even though like OLEDs and stuff could benefit from it. Lots of cool stuff here in terms of the visualization. And then you get really dope effects. If I quit full screening it, trying to make it do something. Oh, that was a sick transition. Holy crap. All right. So it's obviously not hearing music right now. We are going to monitor that back out to our main desktop sound so it hears it. There we go. And it starts act activating based on the music being played. Oh, and the transition effects between them is so sick. So, um, Plane 9 might be my favorite in terms of what it can produce. Again, I've, I've only just started messing with it. I just don't like not having ease of control kind of together here. Um, but that is an option to you as well. And then you just go into OBS. And again, for the window capture, you just choose Plane 9. Resize it to fit properly and then you can play with filters or just leave it as it is some of the transitions are kind of cheesy like that one was not great but the like melting ones and stuff were pretty sick so there we go fairly straightforward and simple just a combination like that is i think what i've really I, i've done a lot of videos on individual plugins i've done videos on like lists of plugins but they're all just presenting what the plugin is as a generic example and i want to make more videos showing you how to get the most out of the plugin. So that's what the past few videos on these kinds of things have been. I've been showing you how to combine plugins and filters and effects to create cool results because this is using Tuna, it's using Spectralizer, it's using third-party programs with window capture, using shader filters, multiple different things combined together to make really cool sources. And I think new streamers trying to come up with effects for their streams get really caught up in like, okay, I added one source, it doesn't look very interesting, what do? And hopefully this gets the ball rolling in your mind to kind of generate more advanced ideas once you start layering things together. Because that's really what it's all about when you're trying to make cool looking stuff. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more cool effects to do on your stream, I have one showing you how to create a pause effect as if you're pausing your stream like a VHS tape, which is pretty sick. Or you can learn how to master your stream audio with this one over here. Remember, be kind, rewind.